Hello there and welcome to the Graffiti Wall Art Program. I'm Doris Bender from Library Arts. I'm so pleased you're here to join me today. Today we're going to talk about creating fun graffiti style letters and then imposing them or placing them on an artificial but cool looking brick wall. So I'm going to walk you through some um, ways to make wild style letters and then I'm going to show you some ideas for decorating those letters. We're going to cut them out and I'm going to show you some really cool neat techniques for creating what looks like a brick wall when it really isn't. We're just going to use some fun techniques to create it. So you're going to need a pencil, some white copy paper. If you have crayons, just regular crayons, that would be great. You'll need a pair of scissors and colored pencils and a black marker. How about we get started? Okay, let's get started with some really simple lettering styles. These are from Graffiti Diplomacy, which was a, a, makes a, a nice series of books uh, on graffiti letter styles. And we're gonna look at these block letters that are in the wild style because they're semi easy to draw and recreate. And I'm gonna show you some tips and techniques for drawing letters like this. So what I have here is I have some letters that I made, a simple A and a B. Now let's not pay too much attention to what's going on inside the letter, but let's look at the letter shape itself. Basically you're taking a regular letter, like you see down here, and we're adding some angles, some curves, a lot of geometric lines, straight, hard lines with corners, but yet rounded edges as well, depending on the letter itself. The whole idea with graffiti art is to exaggerate. So I'm gonna practice making a few letters. Since I did A and B, why don't we try to do a C? So here's a C, right? And we'll make this half D. So the idea is to work with um, the basic letter if it's rounded, but let's add some angles. Maybe that C comes out with an arrow on the end, like this. We angle it in and come back. So there's your basic letter. Let's try a D. So a D again has a straight line and then it has a, a sort of a rounded curve. So what if we angle that straight line instead of making it straight? Let's add that arrow down here, whoops, right here, and then we can pull it up a little bit, angle it out, up, and over and give it a little edge. Bring it in here, and we're just, here we're just going to uh, echo the lines that we already put down. Now, if you wanna give your letters more of a 3D, we're gonna to begin to add planes. There's one plane. Here's two planes. Jump over here to the arrow. There's three. Come over here. We can make a plane right in here. Same thing here. Make some dimension to this D. We're just gonna come out, find that angle. We're gonna come over, find that angle. Just like that. We're gonna make the arrow feel dimensional, just like that. So we can play with the letters inside and out to give them some three dimensionality, okay? So let's try a couple more letters. But this time, I want you to take another sheet of paper, fold it vertically in half. And the reason why we're doing this is this is the size of letter you're gonna want for this project. You're really gonna want half sheet of paper vertical. The ones I did before were more horizontal and larger, but let's make them a little smaller in scale. Let's just try an E. So again, look at the regular letter. The E is three straight lines here and one on the side. But let's mix it up. Maybe we wanna start the E like this. Put an arrow, give that arrow some flair. Come on out, let's go down, over, in, over so we're just building block style letters and exaggerating them then we can come in over here come over here here 
here, 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 here. Again, just exaggerating, just having fun. Let's try an F. Again, F is straight with two lines. Let's try making it funkier. Maybe here again. I like to start with the arrow almost first in a letter design. I just think that that works better and make that extra wide down at the bottom. So what about, again, adding some three-dimensional aspects? Here we go. Here, here, here. Oops, not there. <laughs> Sometimes I even get mixed up. So you can have fun with these letters. You don't have to make them super angular. What if you wanna play with more of a bubble letter? Let's try that. I'm gonna move this paper aside, put another folded sheet of paper out, we'll put a G. You know, sometimes it's fun to just do something curvy, not so angular. And sometimes, quite frankly, that's easier to do than the other type. So you might feel like, well, I'd rather do that. Well, that's okay. You can do that. You can make it more bubble edged, bubbly kind of edged letter instead of a hard edged geometric letter. The idea is to be playful, to have fun. So there could be a G, okay? What about an H in a kind of bubble style letter? So again, maybe you want to do this. Maybe you want to be soft and curvy with the letters. The idea is to be free form and not get too caught up with letters that feel very forced. So you can have fun like that. I happen to prefer myself the angled letters. I'm not putting the arrows on these ones because they're more bubble style, but I encourage you to play with the letters. And I'll give you a real quick peek at the graffiti diplomacy letters again, just so you can kind of see a quick reference. And if you like one, do a quick sketch. Just lightly say, oh, the L's like this. Okay, now I'm going to build around it. Or, oh, the R has that angle. Let me just do a little pencil sketch of the angles that I see and then build the arrows, build these boxy shapes around it. Then once we get our letter designed the way we like it, for instance, if I say, okay, I like this E, needs a little bit of work, but basically I like it. Come up here. Okay, that's an E. I kind of like that design. Let's get into the shape now and just kind of make some bold angular shapes that might be fun to color in. So I'm going to emphasize that. Maybe I'm gonna put some circles in here. Maybe I'm gonna put some diagonals, echo that shape again, and there I have a great E. So a good way to think about um, doing your shapes is filling in the outer shape of the block letter, but maybe leaving those, those um, planes on the edge here that make your letter look 3D, leave those alone for a minute. So I'm going to outline this really quickly with a black marker. And you know, you might make several letters before you decide you like that one that is that you say, okay, that's the one I wanna go with. I go through lots and lots of drawings before I decide I like it. So I advise you not to feel afraid to experiment, to play, to look online at graffiti style letters and play with your designs before you commit to the final coloring. But here we go. I'm just gonna finish outlining what I started. And I know what I like to do once I've outlined all my shapes. I like to just go back in with an eraser and get rid of any pencil lines that are left behind like this cleans it up, 
shows me what I have, shows if I missed anything that I need to go over. And then I'll be ready to talk about color. So let's stop here. And the next video, I'm gonna show you how we can address color in your graffiti letter. Back. So these were some practice letters I did in advance. And what I wanted to point out to you is how I chose to use color in these two letters. This A has what I call a warm color palette. It has reds, oranges, yellows, pinks. The B has what I call a cool color palette where it has the blues, the greens, uh, there's a lighter blue, there's a yellow green. So the idea is I'm using two specific color palettes to show off the qualities of each letter. Now you can choose to stick with a color palette in the warm or the cool tones, or you can decide, you know what, I wanna mix it up. Maybe you wanna pop in uh, a warm tone with your cool tones. You decide how you wanna go, but we're gonna just gonna have some fun playing with color in this letter E I made. So I'm gonna move this one out of the way, and I'm gonna bring um, a cool color palette over, just because I seem to like those colors. I like the blues, the greens, and I'm gonna bring a bunch of different colors. That's a dark green. I'm gonna see if I can find um, maybe a lighter green. And you know what? There's no reason if you don't have color pencils where you can't use a cool color palette of markers. So if you have markers and that's what you have, feel free to go with those as well. Sometimes I combine both, but for this one, I'm going to use the greens because I like to um, mix the colors together and blend them to get sort of a um, gradient or a um, ombre almost look to the letters. So I'm gonna put this back here again. I'm just going to start with um, going from say my darker green up here so I'm gonna put some dark green color. And remember, we already outlined it. We already um, erased our pencil line. So I'm just gonna use the dark green to start the top of my picture. But I'm not gonna take it all the way down because I do wanna transition into, say, more, to, more of a medium green. So I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna overlap what I just did a bit so I can feel that transition of color coming down. So we're gonna use those pretty cool colors to transition the color. And then I might say, well, I think I need something a little, hmm, a little lighter maybe. So I'll go for this yellow green. And again, I'm gonna transition it right into that mid-tone green from the darker green, like this. And then maybe I'll go for, I don't know if I use this one yet, yeah, a lighter green still. But maybe from here, I'm gonna start introducing some blue. So I've got these this green thing going on, right? And I like it, I like the greens but I wanna start introducing some blue. So maybe what I'll do is I'll start with my lighter blue and that lighter blue will start transitioning into darker blues. So again, this is using color pencil. I'm not dealing with the shapes inside of the letter yet. I'm working my way around them. I'll go back to those later. Bring that lighter blue down a bit more. Make sure I get it nice and colored in there. I'm not going to worry about any um, color that might go outside of my letter because guess what? I'm going to cut it out later on. So I'm going to darken my blue here, bring it down maybe just to the corner here and just a little bit into this last edge of the E. And then I'm gonna transition into, I think, some purpley blue. Really like that purpley blue, so pretty. And then finally, like a reddish purple. So we can work our way through it like an ombre effect using the cool colors. 
a little bit at a time. Now I can see here I didn't quite finish, so I want to go back there and finish that. Now I want to think, hmm, what would be bold? What would I like to do on the sides here? Well, I'm thinking something in the lighter green, like this color. Oh, that's a great color. It's like an aqua blue, blue green. So I'm gonna use that to unify the sides of my letter. I'm gonna use it here. And I'm gonna use it down here like that. Then I'm gonna go in here and I think I might change it up. I think I'm gonna go with um, this dark blue. Just to give it again a little fun, unifying color that really makes my letter feel 3D. So here, picking up the blue and pulling that all together. Then you can start seeing, hmm, where do I want to have a little more contrast? I think, you know, like a light blue here, picking up the light blue that I had over here. Maybe I'll bring that pinkish purple up here, even though I had a lot of greens. No reason why I can't bring some of that purple tone up into this color area. That's kind of fun. Uh, I think I'll bring, um, this blue tone over here, it's kind of aqua blue. And again, there's some smearing going on, but that can easily be erased. Plus I'm gonna cut it out later on, so I'm not worried about that. I'm gonna take that really pretty aqua I used on the side a few minutes ago. And I like it so much, I'm gonna put it down here too, because it's just an awesome color. I wonder what color name this has. Hmm, just CB8, nothing interesting. I feel like it'd be like Dalton Blue or some fun name like that. Here's some more purple. And I think I'll finish off with, um, thinking maybe that dark green I started with. Yeah. Okay, so I have that. So the next thing I'm gonna do so I'm gonna cut this paper off because it was part of another half sheet of paper. I'm gonna cut my letter out, cutting just around, following the whole letter. Take your time. So again, any of those little colors that went outside your letter when you were shading, not a problem because we're gonna come off the page when you're done cutting. So I'm gonna cut that bit off. Come around here, like this. And this is my letter. Oh, did I miss a couple circles? I just saw that. I'll do that in a moment, as soon as I get this cut out. So I definitely don't want to leave those white. Like this. Take your time, you don't need to rush. I'm going a little faster just because I need to show you the steps paper scraps. Okay. I need, think I need to bring some more of that purpley red color in here. And there you go. Now, if you want to highlight any of those black lines that may have disappeared when you cut it out, you can go back, add a little bit of extra black lines here and there. That's optional. You don't have to, but if you feel like you'd like to see them a bit more, it's easy enough to do. So we're gonna stop here. You're going to um, work on your brick wall and I'm gonna show you a fun, easy technique for doing that. And then we're gonna attach this to your brick wall. See you in a minute. This is just a black and white print of a brick wall. I'm gonna show you a super easy way to make your own brick wall using some crayons and a half sheet of copy paper. So for the crayons, I just want you to have brown, orange, and black look for a rough surface like this outside is real brick you don't have to have real brick you could also do it on asphalt or cement or anything that's rough first thing i want you to do is make sure your crayon has no paper on it and you're going to rub some orange crayon all over your paper you could rub firmly 
just move your paper as needed to avoid any of those lines that are between the bricks or any any lines that might show up on your rubbing so one two three i'm just going to get that orange crayon see the nice texture that's showing up on the paper those bumps are from real brick but again you could use asphalt you could use any kind of bumpy surface indoors i just found that the brick outdoors would be perfect for this now once i have the orange down i'm going to put that aside and now i'm going to use my brown crayon and i'm going to go right over it nice and firmly to give it a darker look you could also use red if you don't have orange and you want to use some red that would look great with the um, brown to give it even a darker redder brick texture once you've done your rubbing which is what we're doing right now the only thing you have to do is go inside use that black crayon to add the brick lines and i have one finished here that i'm going to show you so let me just finish my rubbing so i've finished my rubbing here here's what i took inside and look at that just by adding horizontal lines and vertical lines you can get an instant brick wall okay we are back remember i showed you this as a sample brick wall this is actually just a black and white image of a black uh, of a brick wall you can just look online at a picture but i recommended that you take a half sheet of paper like you see here and you take some regular crayons and remember outside what we did is we looked for a rough surface we rubbed the orange and again, red could work as well too. And then a dark brown over a rough surface to get that pebbly surface. And I actually did use real brick outside. I brought it inside. I took my black crayon and I simply added horizontal lines first and then little vertical lines to break up the rows into bricks. Now we're ready to take that E and put it right on your wall. So it looks like kind of a cool, graffiti style letter that somebody just put on the wall when nobody was looking. And I'm just going to use some regular glue stick here, nothing fancy. And I'm going to put it at an angle to make it fun. If you wanted to do more than one letter, and sometimes what I like to do, I'm gonna put a little extra glue there, is flip it over and give it a good rub. That way you're gonna really flatten it out and get that letter stuck on. So if you have this and you have some really fun black paper, that would be like an awesome backing to your letter. So what I would recommend is that you take your brick wall Put it on a sheet of dramatic paper like black or red or even a color that you used in your letter and there you go you have an amazing looking graffiti style letter in the wild style which is characteristic of those arrows and you have a beautiful brick wall background this is Doris Benter. I want to thank you so much for joining me today for the wild style graffiti letter drawing workshop. I hope you had fun. I hope you make a great letter and I hope I see you again soon. Bye.